a buddy from prison wanted to send us a housewarming gift and it finally showed up. So this is what he sent us. And this is a perfect example of prison art and how it can transform people's lives. So when Patrick first got locked up, he had this super militant mentality. He was not gonna take any BS from anybody. He spent all his first years at the highest levels. He got stabbing charges, he got fighting charges. Like he was constantly into stuff. And he realized that wasn't what he wanted to do, but he didn't know how to do anything differently. He really never had an opportunity, never had anybody teach him. So while he was there, one of the things that transformed his life was art. In this case, it was tattooing. Because you're not allowed to buy art supplies at these highest levels. Like you can get like little pencils and paper, but you can make illicit tattoo guns. So he learned how to draw and he learned how to do tattoos. And that was like the beginning of the transformation for him because it was something outside of himself, something bigger than himself, something kind of magical that was like making people feel things or making people excited or making things that were just beautiful. And it was so neat to see the way he kind of transformed the way he changed because he's this like gruff, super stocky, big beard, like looks like a mean guy, right? One of the best people I've met. And his whole thing was, all right, how can I keep doing this? So as he got to lower levels and he had access to different things, he kept drawing. And I mean, he was good with a paper and pencil, but I remember the first time he did a painting. I had never picked up a paintbrush or a painting in his life and absolutely killed it. Like it was one of the most beautiful things. It looked like he had gone to art school for years and he was like, yeah, man, you know, I, I just tried to do, I'm not really happy with it. But we were all looking around like, are you kidding me? Like, this is amazing. So now he just got out a couple months ago and he was worried about it. He was like, man, what is my mentality going to be getting out? Like, how am I going to go through this? Like, what am I going to do with myself? And what he realized was that he loves art. He loves being an artist. He loves creating. And if he has an outlet for that, that's a lot better than the alternative. Because he's not a criminal. He's not like a, I want to go sell drugs or do anything else. He just is a take no BS kind of guy. And this is giving him a focus. This is giving him an outlet. This is giving him a way to focus on things in his life that lets him let things slide, that lets him see things differently. And it's really amazing to see that this piece of art came from a guy who, like I said, is super gruff, had this horrible you know, history of charges and things that he did while he was in prison. And now all he wants to do is do art. And he's talking to me and he's got a Shopify setup that's on my link tree if you want to check it out. And he's just trying to figure out a way to engage with the world through his art. And he's not living in good circumstances. Like he did not get out to the best place or to the blessed opportunity. They didn't give him his paperwork when he got out. So he couldn't get a license or even an ID for months. Like he was struggling. It's been hard to find work because where he's at is kind of economically disadvantaged. Like he's just trying to make things work. And art is really the thing that's getting him through. Just like art was really the thing that got him through in, in prison. I mean, at the end, he probably still had some issues. I remember he was in a pod that was real bad. I'm sure he got in some fights. And it was one of those things where he didn't want to anymore and he was doing the work. And he was making that slow progress and art was the thing that really got him there. And I saw a lot of guys like that, that didn't believe in anything in themselves. They didn't believe they had potential for anything but to commit crimes or to hurt other people or to do whatever because they'd never seen it. And all of a sudden they start drawing or they start writing or they start working on things or they start doing music and they're like, man, like I'm actually capable of something. They begin to feel empowered. They begin to feel like they can accomplish something. And I'm really grateful anytime I see that. And that's one of the reasons I'm such a big fan of the arts in prison. When I first got locked up, depending on what institution we're at, you could order from a catalog called Dick Blick that was like 300 page catalog with everything you can imagine. So paints, paintbrushes, pencils, colored pencils, acrylics, whatever. Um, the only thing, they didn't want you to have oil paint for whatever reason, but you could get all this stuff and guys would like develop these amazing skills and that's actually where I learned to draw. I learned to draw and I got all the colored pencils and all the different pencils and the blenders and stuff from the Dick Blick catalog. Then a few years ago, they came in and they changed the rule. You can now no longer order anything from anywhere but Kefi, which is a commissary company, because they want to make that money. So all they do is have a limited selection. It's literally like 10 things on a page that they buy from Dick Blick and then add a bunch of you know surcharge to and then sell to you. So you can't even get like the highest quality stuff or a variety of stuff. You're getting the same thing you were getting before, but you're just paying extra for it and it's not even as good. And that's just an example of when you have a monopoly in the system that takes advantage of people and is not about providing what makes sense or what can be transformative, but it's just about making money. But even with those limited supplies, guys got creative. You see it with the tattoo guns, you see it with the things they're working on, and you see people creating amazing works of art. My buddy Graham who just came home, and some of his work is just absolutely beautiful. He walked out the gate with the last painting that he did, and that was how he got through those last few weeks. He was like, pretty much losing his mind. I mean, as you know, your release date's coming up as you're going through that. And I never had that experience because I only had an hour and a half's notice, but guys go through it and he had his art to get him through. He had something to focus on and something to work with. So the more we empower people with that, the more we have art programs and skills programs and kind of uh, uh, teaching programs in prison, the more we're gonna have people who are transformed. And the more we just lock them in there and shut the doors and basically say, we don't care or you, you shouldn't do the crime if you don't wanna do the time, well, we're not gonna have transformed people. We're gonna have further traumatized people. So again, we know what we need to do. 
we have the opportunity to provide it. And art is just a perfect example of something small we can do and something small we can encourage to make people's lives better, which allows them to make other people's lives better when they get out. It allows them to contribute rather than to take.